so most people think I'm organized. I don't disagree. But I remember the first time I met this person and I existed in the same space with them. My God. Super organized. So, so, super organized. In fact, before we even go to the organization level part, I used to own cats. Um, I started with having a cat. Reasons beyond my control. My partner wanted a pet. The only pet I felt comfortable with was a cat because cats clean after themselves. It's just the whole thing. Anyway, I ended up having a cat. And we needed to have a cat play day. And so we went over our cats. You could say bonded. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know if we would call that bonding. But it was an interesting moment on the cat play day. But beyond that, I got to experience him in a different dimension. He is super organized. He is, he's layers and layers of thinking, just wild, you know? And I find him fascinating, interesting. He has this freedom about him. Yeah. Plus he has, he has fed me a couple of times, so I can't complain. And I like food. So this person has made waves in the industry, but beyond the waves, his mind is like a diamond, honestly. He's somebody that I really love to have conversations with. He's somebody that I like to talk to. One time, talking to him said, he was like, listen, sometimes the conversations sound like an interview, but it's just that I'm so curious about him. I, I, I'm curious. And he also has curiosities that are interesting to explore. Hope you have fun listening to him. And, you know, I hope he leaves you with more questions than answers, to be honest. Yeah, I said it. Okay. You can call me. Welcome. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here, actually. I don't know how many times I've said that. A lot. <laughs> Welcome, Ezra. I'm so happy you're here. And this is literally the start of the conversation, just so you're aware. Okay. Why are you acting like you're on the hot Why not? <laughs> but yeah. How is your 2023? How how was or is? Was since it's three now. I thought you said is. No, how was it? Okay, no, it was it was a good year. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, I was not expecting to reflect today, but okay. Um, I mean, so it's good. Um, I had my my first um uh, my first prolonged time off work, so I had my sabbatical at the start of the year. That was like one of the be a, an interesting yeah an interesting highlight to like kick off the year for me uh so that was for three months um i think yeah i told you yeah. i met you in london and told you about it then as well um and then following that it was back to work and like um we had just uh, done a bit of a reorg um i think a month before i left so like every year or every cycle we sort of like just try to like shake things around at work and all that so uh, basically, that was like uh, the first time I was like interacting with it in practice, like oh, wow, like deep yeah. into it, like getting back from sabbatical. So um, essentially, just I guess my immediate teams. There are a couple of like things that I just felt okay. You know what? We needed to like just pay more attention to, to like put back on track and all that. Shit. Yeah. So there was a bit of that as well. Um, and then I mean work just work 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 leading up to the end of the year so what's weird is yeah. i like that you talked about this because what's weird mm -hmm. is i also tried to take a sabbatical but i ended up working because obviously I, I don't have work boundaries you know <laughs> <laughs> but i wanted yeah. to know what you did that made you so because i knew yours was intentional you had plans you knew exactly where you're going to be which month da, 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 da. yeah how were you so intentional about it i mean i think <laughs> i've been planning for it um like, it wasn't something like, oh, wow, I need rest. Let me take, take yeah. a sabbatical. It was less of that. Of course, I knew I needed rest. Uh, I think for, like, most of 2022, actually, like, I don't want to say burnout, but I guess that's what it that's was. Um, yeah, and, yeah, so I basically just knew that, okay, you know what? I'd actually planned it a year ahead. Um, mm -hmm. I knew exactly when I was leaving. I knew when I'll be getting back. Yeah uh to work so i also like just had like it was easy to like just then plan out yeah. what I, I wanted to spend it uh my plan 
And when I was communicating to my colleagues as well, my plan was essentially like half the time I'm going to spend just experiencing my house in Lagos. Uh, I think since I moved into the place, it has been more of like trying to do it up plus existing in it, but not necessarily. Ex- mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I wanted to like experience that. Um, and the other half was going to be spent doing a bit of traveling. Um, I also had like, I'm not really a traveler like that. So it's more, so travel is always very, for a reason, like I'm going for this, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to, yeah. So I guess so it made, like, it just made sense. That I get. But what does living, yeah. living in a house mean? Because now I'm curious. I'm like, am I living in my house? <laughs> yeah but what does that mean like, what does living in a house mean to you i know it would be different for different people yeah i mean i guess it's also like just seeing how everything how all the plans or how everything you like puts in place how it comes together to like yeah, help work. you enjoy the space is you now like yeah. i'm so sure you have like so... user experience design <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's what that was like for me. And of course, like also like just enjoying all the various things I've put in there. I have good sound, like yeah. sitting and just basking in it and all that. Yeah. So. The favorite thing about you is what I've told you already, you know, but it's like how organized you are. It's how very processed. I don't know how to explain it. You have a process for almost everything. I tried to. Yeah, no, for real. Like almost everything. And then you use the process to collect data and make decisions. So a lot of your decisions feel like they are data back. It's like, I'm so sure if you're cutting off a friend, <laughs> you have a data back reason yeah. why you're doing it. At what point did this start for you? Like, at what point do you remember deciding that I'm going to be driven by process and not just like make random decisions? I don't know if I can answer the question of at what point, because looking back, it sort of feels like... That's how you really think. Yeah, but, but then again, I know that's most likely false. Um, it's, easy, it's easier for you to like remember. Yeah, to remember what you want to remember. I mean, memory is fickle. But yes, I think, yeah, I, I guess for the most part, like even if it's not like collecting data and all that i think there's always just been like some sense of like asking myself why i'm doing something uh Mm -hmm. before doing Mm -hmm. it yeah and all that that has been a part of yeah yeah, my life and all that like even up yeah like now that i'm like trying to think back um i think there was this might sound silly but like i once asked like why why do you pray before you go write your exams or something? I just was as far back as secondary school. I don't know. I, I don't know if I had an answer per se versus like just trying to be silly with it. So I planted, <laughs> this is funny. I planted beans in my backyard and then went to pray to it before an exam because I guess <laughs> that also counts. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So like there was just that interrogating decisions before making them. So I guess when you get in a position where um, you can then make decisions based on data and all that, it just naturally falls in like Obviously. what yeah what what else to yeah base your decisions yeah. off of yeah that's interesting that that things you already observed that's yeah. actually very interesting you no know, for real but coming back right outside <laughs> of place that was the most interesting thing you built or the thing you're most happy about building and it doesn't have to be a business. That's tra- why build. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Like, I don't. I don't mean it to this start of sense. <laughs> yeah. But like even with the with your hands, like things you made or like, I don't know, because I know you built a computer, but I don't know if or you you coupled a computer together. Hmm. Let me flip. Let me answer it in a way that I don't think you are asking. But I think what I'm happy about how I've created my life. So yeah. Oh, wow. I think that's how I'm going to answer that. Okay, question. wait, no, can you do, you, do you mind peeling that a little bit? Just like, I mean, yeah. like just everything, right? Like from relationships to like just everything that comes together to like support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to support the kind of life I want. To what be. made you so intentional? What? What happened? What? 
I thought we just asked that question. No, but that, no, 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 it's different. So yeah. I can I can guess like this made me more process driven or whatever. But like, yeah. what made you so intentional to say? Yes, I want to have X Y Z style of work, or I want to be a tech person, or I want to do blah blah blah. But I also want to have a balanced life. I want this type of life around me. I want this type of house. I want this type of people. Like, like you're really intentional. This is beyond process, in my mind. Yeah, I get it. Um, I think I derive satisfaction in knowing that I'm not flailing. But like I'm doing what I want mm. to do, yeah. So that's in itself, I guess. Maybe Is that that's... what gives you the freedom as well? Because sometimes you, you not sometimes you're always giving the vibe that you're free, like yeah. you do life on your own terms. Yes. Nobody can make you do anything, Hopefully except maybe investors. Not... Yeah, <laughs> 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 I mean even that too. But yeah. Um, so what's the question now? What? I'm just wondering, like, what gives you the permission to be free? Like, how did you build the life? Isn't that how to be happy? Like, yeah. So you're truly happy? I would believe so. <laughs> Was yeah. there a very time you didn't feel like you were that happy that triggered you to want to be happy? Uh, no, not really. But I think, of course, like, the the feeling of happiness or, like, satisfaction in life. Um, yeah, and also... You might be doing certain things and not necessarily like finding what you want, but like you just convince yourself. Like again, it now becomes a matter of perspective of like, you know what, just continue at it. You have like that strong conviction, like what you are doing is right. And it's not like just a random conviction. You can like see examples. You can see why Mm -hmm. it is right and like just keep at it. And eventually when it pays off, it pays off. And yeah. then the happiness, I guess the happiness follows. Oh, yeah, I'll leave so, it. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it feels like I'm being very existential. Yeah. But let's talk about cats because I think it was our yeah, cats that brought us together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so where did the cat love come from? from I, as a kid as well. Um, you grew up with cats. Yeah. Yeah, so my grand, my mom's dad uh, had cats. So going to the village every year end, we got to interact with the cats and we all like cats in the family that's us kids um and one day we asked if we could get one and even though her mom was averse to it no, we she were no, she just doesn't like cats is it really just reason like most mm, of the i guess she just not care about it she does not care for them and she doesn't mm. like it's like why is this thing coming near me yeah exactly so she didn't she didn't really care much for them but where uh, my dad was able to like strike a system where it worked, where we could have cats in the house uh, uh, and they would not necessarily disturb her. And that's how the love for cats started. Of course, like, yeah, so my first cat in Lagos was actually one of the cats we had at home. Which one, Lucy? No, uh, Lucy is, no, that, what I, I moved to Lagos in 2006. So, no, not Lucy. <laughs> what made you move? What made me move? After school, that's where work is, I guess. It's work everywhere, job. <laughs> Um, Wait, like the that's where the that work wanted. I had gotten. So I actually like got a job while I was still in school um, on the island. So yeah, that was, so that made me move to Lagos because I was into Lagos first. You know, lots of people don't know that you studied agriculture. <laughs> Is that something you've been looking about, or nobody just asks you? Or I mean, I say it when I have to say how, it. How the hell did you study agriculture? Because that's what Tobacco gave what me to mean? study. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but like it was, again, it was just for one semester. It wasn't like, oh, I have BSc I break. Yeah. <laughs> well, you now went into computer science yeah, and that's so where you started learning. Mind. Was that where you started learning to code or you were already exploring? No, I was I could write code already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My interest oh. in computing was or was what made me want to study computer science at that point, yeah, so. So people graduate and they're looking for jobs, but you got a job. Like, if you will call a 30K a month salary Back then, job, do you know, like, back then, people would kill. I know. People would kill for that. Yeah. When did you start wearing lipstick? And why? I thought it was nice. Um, I think when, the first time, was probably 2012 slash 2013 the first time um 
that was also around when I started uh, yeah, painting okay. my nails. Yeah. I thought it was and you've nice. not sent back since. Yeah. That's it. Do you do anniversaries for it now? It's not that... I, I not that probably will not remember the date unless I go look for the pictures and check or when did I take the picture or something. Yeah. So that's leading me to the question in online trolls. I remember recently like this guy or someone was dragged for saying that they um, they found in, like core things in what it was that you said in your... There was this thing you released, I think it was a letter, and you had highlighted... It was a letter, it was an article. We had highlighted some things, and this guy was specifically saying that you know it had impacted him or something, and then he was uh, full, yeah. And that was just him getting you know secondhand trolling because it's you most people would troll. So, how yeah. do you first deal with online trolls and ensure that it doesn't carry itself into your real life and like your confidence and all of that? Yeah, so uh, does it bother you? No, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, for the most part. I think I quickly realized, so yeah, this is actually very interesting because there was a time when, there was a time when, again, you know, the, everything I've said about like living intentionally, mm -hmm. uh, I was, I used to be very happy for like that intentional uh, living to be portrayed as like a good example, like for people to see it as a good example of like how to. Yeah. Leave. Um, and I think there was, there was a time when I was naive enough to assume that everyone was operating from like the ba same baseline and would see good as like everyone like, oh, wow, that's good and all that. So it meant that at a point I was bothered if someone disagreed with something that I did or like, I don't know how to put it, like just thought like, oh, yeah, that's that's stupid. Like, ah, shit, what's stupid about it? Maybe they know better. Let me tweak what they think. But I quickly realized, and thankfully, this happened before the mm -hmm. um, popularity. Um, quickly realized um, that that wasn't a way to live and you could just not care um, and just continue to do your thing. And um, those who will see it positively will see it and take what they want to benefit from it. Those who wouldn't, wouldn't. But then again, the good thing is that you don't have a specific audience in mind. So it just means they are put, they are essentially marking themselves as not your audience, if that makes sense. And that's fine. So uh, when it comes to like the subject of trolling, I think the way I see it is, um, again, just one of the, one of the causes of like, I guess being suddenly popular is that all your life and most of the people you've interacted with, they've had the benefit of like being able to see your journey context yeah they have context and like just know you um but like today people take what you've said and judge it by an idea that they have of you again out of context yeah and then once those things clash they would react how they want to react but like you shouldn't let that affect, affect you. you because that's not you but what happens when it's your friends who are doing it like does it have a different impact on you Versus when it's just random for sure. When my friends are doing what? Like maybe attacking you on the internet or maybe saying things that you, you're disappointed in. Yeah, I guess I'll just express the fact that I'm disappointed them. in that. You don't call no, them? No, I don't call people things. to say anything. I was like, no. If it was that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I would just, like, if anything, I think the worst thing I would do is to like just express... If I want to interact with that, I'll just express it as well. And it can't, so if, like they yeah. are aware that you yeah. are aware? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to ask a very different question, which you have the right to plead the fifth. Okay. But you're vocal about it, so I feel like you want to talk about it, right? Um, I don't know what you're talking about, but go on. <laughs> religion. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, vocal. I can, I can talk about it. Yeah, so what was the defining moment for you let me not use defining moment but what was the point where you decided that you know i don't want to identify as christian because you grew up in a christian home in a very christian home it wasn't just christian right so what was the thing that made you say i'm no i'm not doing this yeah so was it what, the bead bearing the what the time that you buried beads and prayed i mean it was a good <laughs> <laughs> i mean that was the that, that was one of the things going on in that, that 
know I passed. You know, so how do you know that the prayer did not work? Because it had nothing to do. Because that's that's proof that the prayer doesn't work. <laughs> I don't get. <laughs> yeah, like, but yes, um, I think, I think it was it was uh it was a combination of like multiple things, but like they all happened within the same period of time. Essentially, when I was in secondary school, um, starting with the fact that I had a classmate who, first of all, was atheist. So that's, that was good because that's... In Nigeria or abroad? In Nigeria. Uh, so that like just introduced me to like this, oh, wow, there's, you can exist and think that God does not exist, right? Uh, so starting with that. And then, of course, like I had Muslim, I had a Muslim friend as well. So we're like Muslim myself and then the atheist guy. Mm-hmm. My dad was a pastor in deeper life, so you can already imagine how deep the Christianity was so deep. Yeah, on our own side. But I think the if I'm going to now, like mention a specific turning point, because like with my friends, we used to engage in conversations about religion and, and all that, like just various stuff. And like, yeah, while you're arguing, you're also like open, open to listen to someone. Because like, I mean, my friend who is a Muslim is literally Muslim exactly how I'm a Christian. Christian. Like, we don't know a truth. We just know what we've been told um, and what we've been told to accept as truth. So, um, and if my religion tells me that he's going to hell, um, he also has, like, an equivalent of that for me as well. So, of course, like, we're not, it's not no longer at Logite. It's like trying to understand what exactly and then like just trying to dig back into like okay why just trying yeah. to understand how we got here right and also um i think the thing that did it for me was uh oh yeah w- the moment that did it for me was one time we're like living um uh, well now we're back from church um and i guess and i would say maybe that was what, by, by doing it for me like that was what actually treated me stay triggering the thoughts for me my my dad made a derogatory remark against muslims that made me start questioning things like um yeah i don't i don't know that you told him not no no no. like it just made me start thinking yeah right like wait a minute but like i feel we feel the way we feel right now because that's what we know like it's not like i've read the Quran or like know everything about Islam to the point that um to the point that I can see objectively that the religion I was practicing was the right one. So why this? Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that just made me more inquisitive, I guess. And also the kind of conversations I was having with the friend who was atheist as well. Like ultimately everything became more Everything it made it made the things that I thought were truths it made them open up for questioning yeah and I guess that's how it all started. So, but did you and your dad ever have a conversation, or even you and your mom ever have a conversation about you not being Christian anymore? How did they take it? Not really, because it wasn't that kind of family. Mm. Uh, it was something. It was something I had to tell my mom as an adult that oh yes, by the way, I'm not a Christian. Because again, you also don't want the stress that comes with. Oh wow! So you're not. You'll probably be flogged. I don't know. Like it's just <laughs> like it's not a. It can't. It won't be a conversation. Yeah. It will be something else. Yeah. So I did not. But how did she take it now as an adult? Um, it's funny because I actually even wrote about this sometime in 2017. Oh, I wrote a tweet about it. But like, yeah, it's funny because I told her in a very. She came to visit me one time, and typically in Lagos, and typically when she comes around. Um, on those days, we go to church together on Sundays and then come back home and then she leaves. But I think she eventually realized how much I did not like church, that she stopped visiting, uh, what's it called? She stopped visiting on, or she stopped making her visits close to, the weekend. Close to Sundays. So she would just be out by, by Sunday. So she won't have to be disappointed and all that or make me do what I don't want to do or something. I don't know what her thought process was, but I noticed that that was happening. Then there was this weekend she had to come visit and yeah, there was a Sunday involved. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to have to tell this. Like, there's no point. I'll just, I'll have to tell her. So I went out that Saturday, had some work to do, go back home and then said, yes, we need to talk. And then sat, we had a conversation and then I said, yeah. So by the way, um, I'll be dropping you off at church tomorrow and I'll come back home. 
and you let me know when you are done. I'll come pick you up. Oh and, all. and then, of course, it went on to the, like the why. Um, yes, I don't believe in God. Um, like I, I, I didn't drop it like that. I can't remember now. This was 2012, perhaps. So it was like a leaning into like the conversation and all that. Mm. And our first reaction was to quote a Bible passage that made me wonder, like, made me ask her, like, why do you think this is the Bible passage to be asking, to be, to be t- quoting to me right now? And it's one, I think it's a, it's a passage in Psalm or something that, say, that says a full certain is that, that there's no God. Like, well, that's, that's I'm having painful, a conversation yeah, with you and your response is to call me a fool. But instead of you saying, you are, not, you are refusing to see the fact that you are calling me a fool in that moment, what you think is, oh, you, it's in you. the Bible. Like, I don't get it. Like, this is why. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. So, the being of the red <laughs> liquid, since you know, you know, you made that the whole thing, right? <laughs> the whole Twitter was shaken for a whole week because of you, because you were unbelievably liquid. But did it first, do you think you had an impact in her receiving the news in the sense? I mean, you pretty weren't there yet, but now. Your reaction, your relationship with her, and I don't want to make this about your family or whatnot, but even your relationship with people who have expectations of you, did that make it easier for them to swallow a lot of things that you say even when they're not comfortable with it? I wouldn't know that. So I have to ask them. Yeah. But like, yeah, but, but I mean, to answer the mom part in, in, in particular, I don't think so. Like it's been, like we... We should talk about it sometimes. No, we don't have to. Like, there's no reason. We just to... like it. Yeah, we've moved on. Like, this was a long. This was 2012. This was literally four years before Pista Kikon became a thing. So, yeah, it's like a conversation we've had. It's something that we now. Elephants in the room. We've established that yes, this is just the reality of things. I don't believe in God, so you can't make me. That is, yeah, exactly. That is interesting. She still prays. Yeah about it and i told that that that's fine like i'm not averse it's not like i eat christians or i, I eat anything like that so i'm not averse to it but like i will tell you wh- 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 how i feel about it and i would expect you to not like don't don't think something will suddenly yeah, change yeah. yeah or like you're entitled to change on my part just because entitled. you are praying about it yeah so how we had established that long time. Yeah, the cool thing about you is how you can respect, like you can respectfully have conversations. It's like, I can disagree with you, but not disrespect you. And I wish more people approach conversations from that perspective where we don't have to insult each other. We don't have to be on the same side. We don't have to, like we can respectfully disagree and we'll still be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, that's it's a money conversation. I think at some point I was like, oh yeah, you know, it seems to be a bad idea to start from like being a local government chairman or something. Hmm. Even the process of going through that, people who are serious will probably not come back to me because they don't, like you don't want... You said people who are serious. No, not even that. Even, yeah, including people who are serious. At a point, I was bothered if someone disagreed with something that i did or like i don't know how to put it like just thought like oh yeah that's that's stupid or like ah shit what's stupid about it what was going through your mind the day that you got the honor from the president and you just walked away like nothing 